So to help you with your homework, I wanted to make a quick tutorial on writing first species counterpoint. So here's our canis firmus, which uh, as you already know, the first step when you're writing counterpoint is to analyze the canis firmus that you've been asked to write against. So I've done that for you here. You can see um, that I've highlighted where the skips are and the leaps and also the climax. And what that tells you is these are places where you do not want to have skips or leaps in your can um, counterpoint. And also the climax of the canis firmus is a place where you want to make sure that you don't have your uh, climax when you're writing your counterpoint. So after you've analyzed your uh, canis firmus, the best thing to do is start off by filling in what you know um, will always be true. So you fill in the end. You know that you're going to end with an octave, and you know that you're going to um, come into that octave with a leading tone. Remember to fill in your intervals here. So we have a third going to an octave. And then might as well go to the beginning now because we are writing um, underneath the canis firmus, and therefore our only choice is whether to begin um, on an octave or a unison. So now I want to uh, continue working backwards. You'll notice that the canis firmus um, ends with me, re, do. It's tempting to just move in contrary motion, but there's two problems there. First, we have le, ti, do, so that B flat to C sharp being an impermissible um, augmented second melodically. But if we change that to a B natural and have la ti do, you notice between the canis firmus and the counterpoint, we have a tritone. So it appears that our two best choices are either an A or a D. Uh, since the A adds a little bit more melodic interest, we'll start out with that and then see if it works out in the end. So now I want to go back to the beginning. You'll notice we have a skip up in the canis firmus and then a step down. So what I'm going to do is contrary motion skip down followed by a step up. Now uh, two skips in contrary motion are permitted at the same time. Um, a leap would be a little bit too much at the same time as a skip, or it wouldn't be ideal at least. Now you'll notice we have an 8 followed by a 5. Again, not always ideal, but it's permissible. So we'll see um, how it works out and see whether we want to change that. So now we're coming up very soon to a large leap in the canis firmus. So I'll try a couple of things out. First, try uh, going back down to that K, to that B flat, so parallel thirds. Um, is certainly possible, um, but I want to try something a little bit different here. I want to see if maybe we bring this all the way up so we have a skip right before the other skip, and we have nice contrary motion there um, with that canis firmus moving stepwise contrary motion. So that leap looks like it'll work really well, and it may even end up being our melodic climax. So it also sets up nice uh, stepwise motion down in the counterpoint to contrast the leap up in the canis firmus right to there. Now at this point, since the canis firmus is headed towards its climax, um, I think it makes sense to keep descending uh, down in the counterpoint um, to contrast that uh, motion up in the uh, canis firmus. So in the counterpoint we're continuing down. Um, so some parallel motion, some contrary, which is great. And now we just have one note uh, to fill in. So at this point in, it's tempting to use lay uh, because it fills in that gap there. There's two issues with lay here. One is that it's a lot of parallel motion. It's permitted. We're allowed to have three sixes in a row, but it's a little bit much. The other is that that 
a relationship between the lei and the t, even though it's not immediate, um, it's a little bit close. So if we move uh, that up to an e to re, adds a little bit of melodic interest to the line and also avoids that harsh cross relation, or not cross relation, but that hard, harsh relationship between lei and t so close to each other. Now I'm just taking a look um, at the overall shape arch of my line and also its relationship to the canis firmus. You can see there is a decent amount of contrary motion um, and it ends correctly. So it actually seems like it works quite well. But I'm not done yet. And now is when I sing and play through the counterpoint and canis firmus where I double check uh, my intervals, make sure I don't have any dissonances, check perfect consonances, making sure that I've approached them by contrary motion, um, the relationship between the two lines, the overall, overall arch of my melodic line, make sure I don't have any dissonant leaps or outlining, outline any dissonant intervals. All of these things I do now before I decide that I'm done. And I make sure it's a musical example.